Hello guys, and I just want to do a quick video on why I don't believe in eternal conscious torment. The idea that the unsaved will um, be cast into a lake of fire and will burn and burn and burn and burn and forever be in agony forever and ever and ever. And I'm going to present uh, a few reasons in this video um, why I disagree with that. So the first reason why is that the Bible says that God is just, God is merciful, um, and God is love. Um, so what loving God would um, would throw billions and billions of unsaved people into a lake of fire to burn forever in agony? Um, just doesn't make sense. Um, also... Um, what many of the traditionalists, those that believe in eternal conscious torment, say, what most of them say, is that anyone who hasn't eat, has never heard the gospel, has never heard of Jesus, um, um, doesn't get any mercy or forgiveness after death. That's it. They're condemned simply because um, they were they were in the wrong place. Um, you know, there's many parts of the world where they don't have internet access, uh, they don't have ac access to Bibles, so they never hear, hear the gospel. Um, so even if they, they believe in God, um, that's not enough to get saved. You've got to believe in Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Saviour. So, um, what most of the traditionalists say is that, you know, if you're born in a part of the world where, um, you know, you, you've they've never heard of Jesus before, they don't have access to Bibles or the Gospel, they're too bad, you're just going to burn in hell forever. And yeah, that's total, that idea is totally against God's um, merciful and loving character. Um, also the fact that the Bible over and over again says that, that um, only believers get eternal life and uh, most traditionalists interpret that as to mean that um, eternal life means living in, he in heaven forever and that death means living in hell forever. But um, if we have a look at, the, at what eternal life means, if you go to Romans um, chapter 2 verse 7 in the New Testament, uh, we see what the meaning of eternal life means. It says, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honour and immortality, comma, eternal life. So, we see that um, immortality, um, it says, to them that seek for glory and honour and immortality. So these traditionalists that say that we all have an immortal soul and we're all naturally are immortal, um, this verse clearly refutes that. Uh, you can look it up for yourself. Romans chapter 2 verse 7. Why would we have to seek for immortality if we already had it? That, so your argument about this immortal soul not rubbish doesn't make sense. Um, and also, if we go to uh, Matthew um, 10, 28, uh, these traditionalists say that we have an immortal soul that cannot be destroyed. Um, yeah, if we go to Matthew 10, 28, again in the New Testament, it says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So there's no getting around that. Um, it, this verse goes completely against what you were saying. So by saying that the soul is immortal and cannot be destroyed, you're completely going against God's word here. Um, so that's another reason why to reject the idea of immortal soul and um, and uh, this idea that unsaved people are going to burn in hell forever. Uh, finally, if we go to John uh, chapter 3 verse 16, uh, again we see this contrast uh, between uh, those that 
have eternal life and those that don't. So uh, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Again, it's saying that unsafe people, they're not going to burn in hell forever. They're, gonna, they're simply going to burn in, uh, they're simply going to perish. Uh, the Greek word for perish is apol apolumi, which means to kill, to destroy. And again, it's saying only the saved have everlasting life. Only the saved live forever. Again, um, if we go to Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, so as we can see, we see that eternal life, immortality is a gift from God. It's not by default. It only goes to the saved. And yeah, the, the unsaved, they will suffer in hell, um, in Hades, uh, for a while with a, 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 a just punishment that is proportionate for their sin. Um, and then at the great white throne judgment, they will be condemned and cast into the lake of fire to burn up and where both soul and body will be destroyed. That's why it's called the second death. Uh, read Revelation 21.8 and Revelation 20.14. Um, finally, um, another point I'd like to make is that Jesus Christ was able to pay for all of mankind's sin by um, by spending a few hours in agony on a cross. And he was able to pay for everyone's sin, well, everyone who believes in him anyway. Um, yet, um, traditionally say that the wages of sin is eternal torment and that you can never pay for your sin at all. Um, that's what they claim. If we go to, uh, I think there's a verse in Romans uh, which says, Here we go, Romans chapter 6 verse 7 says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. So they're, they're freed from the burden of sin. And Romans 6 12 says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, not immortal body, mortal body, that you should obey it in the lusts thereof. So all these verses saying that we're not immortal the soul isn't immortal, we are mortal, and we can only gain immortality through God's um, gift. There's so many verses in the Bible that support the idea of conditional immortality, that immortality is a gift from God, and that um, without it, um, after death, um, unsafe people, they will go to hell, they will suffer in Hades with a, 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 a punishment which is... Um, proportionate to this, the level, the amount and severity of sins committed on earth before they will then, um, they will then perish in the lake of fire after the judgment day. Um, so, so yeah, traditionalists um, haven't be, made a clear answer to this question that if, if the wages of sin is eternal torment, um, that mankind that an unsafe person can never pay off their sin, um, then how come Jesus was able to pay for all of mankind's sin by spending a few hours on the cross um, in agony? It does say in the Bible, again, I uh, can't remember what chapter, what verse, but it does say um, that, um, that um, Jesus Christ took our place on the cross um, for our sins, so logic dictates that an unsafe person should suffer for a while in hell uh, before then dying and ceasing to exist, which is exactly uh, what happened to uh, Jesus um, before he was resurrected, of course. So, um, so yeah, um, also another point I'd like to make is again, the Bible says that God is merciful and just, but according to traditionalists, anyone um, that's um, that's not saved 
um, no matter how good or nice a person they were, everyone from, you know, a 15-year-old atheist to Adolf Hitler will suffer the same horrific punishment, which is to burn in the lake of fire forever and ever. So what is, how is that just? How can it be just that they all get the same horrific punishment? Um, doesn't make sense. So those are the reasons why I don't believe in eternal conscious torment. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Um, if you have any comments or questions you'd like to, to ask, then please comment below. If you want more videos, uh, then please subscribe. But for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching. Peace.